Hello and welcome back to the Conlin Publishing YouTube channel, where we explore the rich history and culture of Ireland. Today, we're going to learn about one of the most beloved figures in Irish lore, St. Bridget. St. Bridget, or Bridge in Irish, is the patroness of Ireland, along with St. Patrick and St. Columba. She is also the patron saint of poetry, healing, smithcraft, and fire. She is celebrated on February 1st, which is also the ancient Celtic festival of Imbolc, marking the beginning of spring. But who was St. Brigid, and what makes her so special? How did she become a saint, and what are some of the legends and miracles associated with her? What is the meaning and origin of the Brigid's cross, the symbol that is often seen on her feast day? In this video, we're going to answer these burning questions and more as we take a deep dive into the history and lore of St. Brigid. Let's begin. Born in the 5th century AD, in a time when Ireland was transitioning from paganism to Christianity, Saint Bridget was the daughter of a pagan chieftain named Duak and a Christian slave woman named Brusha. Raised with a strong faith and a generous spirit, Saint Bridget would go on to found several monasteries. A chieftain was the leader of a clan or a tribe in ancient Ireland who had authority over land and people. Her father, chieftain of the Leinster clan, ruled over a large area in the east of Ireland. Whilst her mother was sent away and sold, but after Bridget was old enough, she was returned to her father and put in charge of the dairy. If you have never heard of St. Bridget before, there is a good chance that you'll have heard of a St. Bridget's Cross, a distinctive four-armed woven symbol made from dried reed that is often displayed on her feast day. According to the story, she was visiting a dying pagan chieftain who was curious about her faith. She noticed some rushes on the floor and started to weave them into a cross while explaining the meaning of Christianity to him. The chieftain was moved by her words and converted to Christianity before he died. Ever since, the St. Bridget's Cross has been a sign of faith, hope, and protection in Ireland. To make a Bridget's Cross, you'll need 16 fresh rushes of equal length. Fold one rush in half and place it horizontally. Then, fold another rush in half and place it over the first one vertically, forming a cross shape. Holding the center of the cross with one hand, add more rushes by folding them in half and weaving them over and under the arms of the cross. Repeat this process until you have four arms of equal length. Finally tie the ends with a string or a ribbon, trim the ends to make them neat, and you have made your own St. Bridget's Cross. Irish people hang the Bridget's Cross in their homes, usually above the door or the window, to ward off evil, fire, and hunger. It's a symbol of the changing seasons, as it's made on the first day of spring, when the earth is reborn after the winter. One of the most remarkable aspects of St. Bridget's life and legacy is her connection to the pagan goddess Bridget, who was worshipped by the ancient Celts as the goddess of fire, poetry, healing, and smithcraft. Some scholars believe that the two Bridgets are actually the same figure, or that the saint was influenced by the goddess, or that the goddess was Christianized into the saint. Either way, the Bridget's Cross represents the fusion of the old and the new, the pagan and the Christian, the natural and the supernatural in Irish culture. The Christian church often adopted pagan symbolism, such as the Bridget's Cross, in order to facilitate the conversion of the Celtic people, who were reluctant to abandon their ancestral beliefs and practices. By incorporating elements of the native religion into the new faith, the church created a syncretic form of Christianity that was more appealing and acceptable to the Irish people. This was a common strategy in the Christianization of Europe, as the church tried to assimilate and transform the existing cultures and traditions of the various peoples it encountered, rather than to eradicate them completely. Ireland was one of the last pagan countries in Europe to convert to Christianity, along with other regions such as Scandinavia, the Baltic states, and parts of Eastern Europe. The process of conversion was gradual and complex. It took several centuries to complete. The first missionaries to Ireland came from Britain and Gaul in the 5th century, and they were followed by others from different backgrounds and traditions. 
The most famous of these missionaries was St. Patrick, who is credited with converting most of the island and establishing the Irish Church. However, he was not the only one, nor the first one, to bring Christianity to Ireland. There were many others, such as St. Palladius, St. Columba, St. Columbanus, and St. Brigid, who played important roles in the spread of the faith and the development of the Irish monastic movement. The Irish Church was unique and influential in its organization, art, literature, and missionary activity, and it contributed greatly to the Christianization and civilization of Europe. For example, the Irish Church was organized around monasteries, rather than dioceses or parishes. Monasteries were independent and self-governing communities of monks and nuns who followed different rules and traditions. Some monasteries were founded by famous saints, such as Patrick and Brigid, and became centers of learning, culture, and spirituality. Monasteries also had networks of daughter houses and affiliations, which created a complex and dynamic ecclesiastical structure. The Irish Church produced remarkable art and literature, especially in the form of illuminated manuscripts, metalwork, stone carvings, and poetry. Some of the most famous examples of Irish art and literature are the Book of Kells, the Ardar Chalice, the High Crosses, and the poems of St. Brigid. Irish art and literature combined Christian and Celtic motifs, symbols, and styles, creating a distinctive and expressive aesthetic. It also reflected the intellectual and spiritual achievements of the Irish Church, such as its mastery of Latin, its knowledge of science and theology, and its devotion to prayer and contemplation. The Irish Church was a missionary church, which sent out many of its members to spread the gospel and establish new churches in other lands. Some of the most notable Irish missionaries were Columba, who founded the Monastery of Iona and evangelized Scotland and Northern England, Columbanus, who founded several monasteries in France, Germany, and Italy, and Aidan, who founded the Monastery of Lindisfarne and converted the Anglo-Saxons. Irish missionaries are known to have also traveled to Iceland, Scandinavia, and even as far as Russia, bringing their faith, culture, and learning with them. St. Bridget had a close connection to St. Patrick, the Apostle of Ireland, and one of her fellow patron saints, St. Patrick baptized St. Bridget when she was a young girl, and he recognized her holiness and potential. He gave her a special blessing, saying that she would be the mother of many saints and that her name would be honored throughout Ireland. St. Bridget also attended St. Patrick's deathbed, and he entrusted her with his staff, which became a symbol of her authority and power. St. Bridget and St. Patrick are often depicted together in Irish art and literature, as two of the most influential and beloved figures in Irish Christianity. She was known and respected for her kindness, compassion, and charity, as well as her wisdom and leadership. She founded several monasteries, including the famous one at Kildare, which became a center of learning and art. She also ordained bishops, wrote poetry, and performed many miracles. The Monastery of Kildare, or Kildara in Irish, meaning the Church of the Oak, was the most renowned of St. Bridget's foundations. It was a double monastery, meaning it housed both nuns and monks under the authority of an abbess. St. Bridget herself was the first abbess of Kildare, and she appointed St. Conlith as the first bishop. The monastery became a major spiritual and cultural center, attracting scholars, artists, and pilgrims from all over Ireland and beyond. It was also famous for its scriptorium, where illuminated manuscripts were produced, such as the Book of Kildare, which was said to be so beautiful that it was the work of angels. The Monastery of Kildare survived the Viking raids and the Norman invasions, but it declined in the later medieval period due to the rise of other religious orders and the suppression of the native church by the English. The monastery was dissolved in 1539, during the Reformation, and its buildings were destroyed or converted to other uses. Today, only the Round Tower and the Cathedral remain, as well as a modern reconstruction of St. Bridget's Fire Temple, where a perpetual flame was kept in her honor. St. Bridget's Day, or La Fela Bridge in Irish, is celebrated on February 1st every year as the feast day of St. Bridget and the ancient Celtic festival of Imbolc. It is a day to honor the patroness of Ireland and her many gifts and miracles, as well as to welcome the coming of spring and the renewal of life. 
Since 2022, St. Bridget's Day has also been designated as a national public holiday in Ireland, as part of the government's recognition of the efforts and sacrifices of the people during the COVID-19 pandemic. This means that Irish citizens are entitled to a day off work and school and can enjoy various events and activities that celebrate St. Bridget in Irish culture. Some of these include making Bridget's crosses, visiting holy wells, attending mass and prayers, lighting candles and bonfires, listening to music and poetry, and participating in parades and festivals. St. Bridget's Day is a special occasion to remember the past, appreciate the present, and look forward to the future. Well, that about brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning about St. Bridget, the patroness of Ireland and her legendary miracles. If you did, consider visiting Ireland for her national day, February 1st, and join in the fun at one of the many festivals taking place across the island. Go to www.visitireland.com for a list of events to spark your imagination. Why not impress the locals with your own handmade St. Bridget's Cross? Thank you for watching. We really appreciate when we get a thumbs up on videos you have enjoyed. This helps us know what content you enjoy the most. Share it with your friends. If you enjoy learning about Irish history and mythology, check the pinned comments below where you'll find our full playlist. While you're there, let us know what you'd like us to cover next. Subscribe to the Conlin Publishing channel and support independent creators, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye and good luck, or as we say in Ireland, Slán August Bannacht.